Hello everyone, this is Jim Lewis from Model Train Technology and today we're going to install the N-Scale precision detector into the layout. And uh, this is a different setup than the HO and the other ones where the detector is completely above the layout. And the reason for that is that the detector has to be, the sensor has to be low enough uh, for the track uh, to detect it. So. Uh, we built this uh, special setup. So the way this works, uh, you can see this little plug here. Uh, the first step is to take what's called a Fortzner bit. Uh, don't take a blade bit, you know, the flat bladed type or even a twist bit. This is real, this is cost a few dollars more. This is one half inch. And uh, the reason we use this is, uh, there are two good reasons. One is that it creates a very clean hole, uh, cut the corner of the hole. Uh, as it cuts. It doesn't rip it. And so uh, we want to get a nice clean hole there and uh, drills right down through, creates a clean hole. And also this bit I found is a little bit easier to make sure that it's vertical. Uh, just uh, the appearance of it just makes it look a little bit better. We want to have that hole be uh, completely vertical. Seems like a big hole, but what we did is we created this cool little uh, contraption here. It's a plug. And inside there are two sets of slots and one set of slots ends shorter. And so when the board goes into this, uh, this uh, thing, there's one setting where the board, and that's just sitting on the slot, the board is fairly high in the plug. Uh, this can be turned around completely, uh, 180 degrees, and there's another slot where the board will recess down further. We use this first setting uh, because we're using track, uh, just standard track. Uh, the, the, the higher setting is for when we use the Kato track. And if you compare the height of the rails of these two, you can see that the rails are quite a bit higher. And the sensor is so uh, precise and sensitive that it can determine the, the height difference. And it'll actually see this ballast that's on the Kato track. So we're gonna wanna raise it up and we created a very clever way for you to be able to do that. So it's pretty simple. We drilled the hole um, and now we just take this plug and it, it can turn 180 degrees or 360 actually. We're going to put it in this way. And the way we designed the plug is that this hole surface is now covered. So if you wanted to plaster around this or whatever, nothing's going to go through the hole. This is a lot better. I've, I've uh, mounted sensors before where I drew a series of round holes and then I try to file it and cut it out. It just makes a mess. So after some study and some fiddling around, we came up with this, this cool little system. All right, your sensor uh, will have three connectors, two that are next to each other. Those are power. And you'll have either uh, this plug, which has the black and red on it. And it doesn't matter when you plug in power, which is left and right. It's, it's uh, ambidextrous, let's say. And here's the sensor wire, all right? So that's the way, uh, one for form of this, and these uh, have pins at the other end, and you can connect them to whatever you like. Uh, hopefully you're connecting them to one of our signal controllers, and we'll have another video. This is just about installing the sensor uh, right now. So we just put those wires in through the layout, and the sensor is on this side, so, right? So you see that sort of black thing? Here's the CPU, and then the potentiometers, the trim pots, and the dip switch in the back, and that will face away from the track. Uh, the way to do this is when you put the sensor in, it goes in the whole, the slot farthest uh, or closest to the track. All right, so there we go. And the last thing to do is put the cover on, and it's pretty simple. It also has a set of, a slot, and the slots are closer to the, the sensor hole. Here's the sensor hole. And so you mount, you just slide that in that way, and there you go, it's completely done. And um, so that's, that's one setup. Let me show you the other setup for powering this. Uh, I'm gonna take this off, and we have a... So here's the other way that we can power the, the board. Uh, this is a, our JST to JST plug, and depending on what your, which power module you're using, uh, we have two, one with JST plugs, so this plug will just plug into our power module. Uh, the other kind that you might choose is with uh, the terminal screws, and you just need a uh, loose wire uh, to connect up. Either one will do. 
uh, or your own power supply. The sensor uh, will work on 5 to 12 volts DC. Uh, it will work on 15, up to 15 volts AC, and you can power it from the DCC power. And uh, we recommend you use the standard 12 volt supply. All right, so this is a GST plug where all the tabs have been uh, removed to make it possible to slip this into the mount. So we just run that down through the layout, run the sensor wire down. And by the way, if you want your sensor, uh, whatever you're connecting it to, isn't close enough, you just clip this off and end off and uh, solder a longer wire there. We use yellow for the sensor wire just to keep things straight. And then this thing just slides right in like that. And I'm going to run the the other end of that wire to my power module and plug it in. And it will boot up and the light flashes and we're ready to go. Okay, so there's the precision detector installation. I have uh, for our sample and for our demos, we have a clear uh, electrical box. So I'll put that on just so you can see how this will look that way. And so the train goes across and uh, you can adjust the, this, the sensor accordingly. All right, that's one form. Uh, usually you'll have the silver electrical box just like that. Of course, you can't see it, but uh, you would connect up the, the yellow sensor wire to your, to your signal controller or your bells or whatever, your relays, whatever you're going to do. Okay, so now, as I mentioned before, the problem with the cocktail track is that it's a little bit higher and we want to make sure that this, the sensor, see so as you move this farther away, the, the edge of this track uh, sets off the sensor. When it's very close, it won't, okay? So it'll still work uh, very close up. So if that's your setting, uh, and then most, I would say 80% of the time, you're going to have the sensor very close. You can just set, do it that way, put the electrical box on, and, and there you go. So the, the sensor will only detect there. But as you move away, the, the, the sensor will pick up the track here. All right, so the way we do that is we pull the sensor out of the case. We're going to pop this up, turn it 180 degrees, push it back down, slide it back into the mount, doing this remotely so I can't quite see what I'm doing. There we go. And now you see that it's not picking up the track, it's just picking up what my hand, which would be a train going by. All right, so how do, if we put the electrical box on now, all right, we have a little bit of a problem. So included in the kit is this little spacer, and the spacer will just slide down. Oops, didn't quite get it there. And that creates a higher mount for the case. And then you can landscape around this, uh, fill it in, or however you want. Or you could just raise the level. Uh, so uh, there are lots of different ways to do the scenery around this, but that will now give you the right height for the Kato track when it's not right next to it. When it's right next to it, you don't have that problem. But as you move farther away, uh, at about this distance, you're going to, I had this set narrow. So you can see that we don't pick up the, the uh, Kato track. So that's how that works. If you have any questions, email me at jim at modeltraintechnology.com or support at modeltraintechnology.com. Thanks for watching.